What's up everyone, welcome back to Gaming Instincts TV. Nick again with part 2 of the Dragon Ball Evolution. Last time we were talking about how the early fighting games within Dragon Ball Z have influenced the more recent titles like Dragon Ball Fighters. Tosei software under the timeline of the Tosei era marked the legacy and blueprint for later Dragon Ball fighting games that would follow and expand off of. The last title Tosei worked on was Dragon Ball GT Final Bout for the PlayStation in 1997. One of the first realized 3D rendered fighting games in the Dragon Ball genre. Once Tosei ended on that note, it would not be until five years later when the next big Dragon Ball fighter came, and that game was the more well-renowned Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Released in 2002, it was developed by Dimps, another Japanese developer, and thus this begins the Dimps era of Dragon Ball fighting games. Dimps is a recurring developer for Dragon Ball titles, but I'll share that more in a later video for these games. In an interesting off-topic note, Dimps has developed a few games for another fighting series that is highly popular to most of the world. Did you guess it? I'll give you a hint. Sure you can! Yep, it's Street Fighter. Dimps was hired by Capcom to develop the worldwide return of Street Fighter with its fourth main entry titled Street Fighter 4 in 2008 and its follow-ups. Super Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, and Ultra Street Fighter 4. They've also developed the fifth entry, which is Street Fighter V, released in 2016, and its update that's currently going right now, Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. Back to Dragon Ball, taking over the mantle of the Dragon Ball Z fighting games, Dim sought to correct and expand on the mechanics left over from Tosei. Dragon Ball Z Budokai has a roster of 23 characters that range from the Saiyan to the Cell Saga, and it retains a lot of the mechanics from the previous fighting games under Tosei. The obvious quick combos, the ability to fight in the air or on the ground, but only if knocked into the air. And the key charging, as well as shooting key blast or energy waves. But the newer mechanics introduced to the Budokai series is the ability to transform. Characters like Goku and Vegeta no longer start off in their default Super Saiyan outfits. They start out in base form and have the ability to transform through a new mechanic known as the skill slot. Even characters like Frieza and Cell start off in their base forms and the transformations do play homage to the anime by having health and strength increased based on the transformation. Using the logic in the show that Vegeta once said a Saiyan becomes a Super Saiyan, their base power level is multiplied by 50. Or as Kai and Kai had told Goku, when, when using the Kaioken technique, the user's power level is multiplied by 20 times its normal output. The skill mechanic featured 7 skill slots that contained various attributes for whatever characters you use. These all included increased damage, vitality, and even new key moves ranging from super attacks to key waves, like Piccolo's special beam cannon, or as I said before, Goku's KO Ken attack. And even character specific skills are mentioned here. Transformations, be it Final Form Frieza or Elder Kai, Potential Unleashed Gohan. And in terms of competitive play, being able to cancel moves into other moves was a greatly added feature that did separate the boys from the men, so to speak. Featuring a fresh look at finding more complex combos within the game, moves started as a series of either punches or kicks and ends with key blasts that usually become a key wave combo ender. Another interesting addition is a charge launcher that knocks opponents further back, opening them up for more punishment. Special and ultimate attacks are in this game, which play out as a cutscene when performing the necessary input, like Goku performing the spirit bomb or Vegeta performing his final flash move. A dedicated guard button was added to defend against an offensive opponent. Fighting Clash, which I believe the later series dubbed as Exchange of Blows. This is when both characters hit an attack at the same time and a small scene plays out to where both characters are just duking it out, blocking and dodging each other's attacks until one person knocks the other out or they're both set back into a neutral position. Stages this time around do not have the destructive element like previous titles, however, the World Tournament stage has a ring out option and that happens when opponent is pushed too far over the arena edge. The game's story mode is a retelling of the sagas from the Saiyan to the Cell Saga. Players do certain objectives or fight against certain opponents of that saga and watch cutscenes as they reenact the anime. What if scenarios also make a return, such as Vegeta actually beating Goku in the Saiyan Saga or Frieza defeating all the Z Warriors on Planet Namek? And another feature that will carry over to other Dragon Ball titles is the ability to change the voice options from Japanese to English. Budokai is the first game to feature the Funimation cast in their character roles. Due to the story mode, character transformations were limited. Saiyan characters could only transform to their Super Saiyan Grade 1 forms, 
Extra transformations would not be available until Budokai 2. Speaking of Budokai 2, released in 2003, it retains all the same elements as Budokai. The story mode expands further into the Majin Buu saga, so more characters and extra transformations become available. But a weird caveat is that few characters were removed from the game, and characters such as Frieza and Cell no longer transform into their final forms. They just stay there by default. But also, Saiyan characters like Goku could transform to both Super Saiyan 2 and 3, Adding further material from Dragon Ball is the ability to use fusion techniques. These techniques included the fusion dance or the Pator earrings. And for those that may not know, in Dragon Ball Z, the fusion dance is a set of movements to be done by two characters in perfect sync to create a more powerful being among the two. The fusion is said to last up to 30 minutes, but can be decreased further based on how much energy is being given off. An example of this type of fusion would be Goten and Trunks doing the dance to become Gotenks. The Pator earrings are a set of earrings worn by the Kaioshin, and the earrings are given to users who wish to fuse with another person to raise their power level significantly. Originally, it's said that the transformation is permanent, but as of Super, it's been retconned to the fact that it only lasts about 30 minutes. Uh, plot device. Unlike the fusion dance, the Pator earrings require the users to put the earrings on the opposite side of their ears, and they both get sucked into one another, creating a new being. And this example would be from the anime when Goku and Vegeta are fusing to become Vegito. The fusion dance allows various fusions that weren't seen in the show, such as Tien and Yamcha fusing to become Tien Cha. Budokai 2 with all these changes is a fully upgraded package for Budokai 1. Jumping into Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, it was released in 2004. And what has been said about Budokai 1 and 2 can definitely be said the same for Budokai 3. More expansions on what's been previously established, and in Budokai I mentioned that in order to fight in the air an opponent had to be knocked in the air, this is no longer the case in Budokai 3. Characters can now freely move between the air or the ground. The story mode is roughly the same, the inclusion of Dragon Ball GT Saga was added along with a few Saga related characters like Kid Goku and his Super Saiyan 4 transformation, Omega Shinron, and Gogeta. Even movie characters made an appearance in this game, including Bardock, Broly, and Cooler. Fighting mechanic-wise, Exhaustion makes a return, in which characters overgoing their key limit are forced into a state of rest until the key meter refills. A complex skill of dodging, where a well-timed guard against an opponent's attack rewards the player with being able to avoid it completely. Teleport counters debut in the game, which is a staple for future titles. If an opponent attacks, the player can teleport behind them at the cost of key consumption. An interesting note is that this can be said for the opponent as well. If a teleported counter happens, the teleporter is allowed an attack, but the opponent can teleport counter at the same time. At higher skill, this can cause a rapid succession of teleports to happen on the screen until one person runs out of key. Another new mechanic is Hyper Mode, a mode that causes characters to glow red when activated. Similar to the KO Ken attack, it allows damage buffs and grants the users with resistance to light attacks as to not disrupt their offense. The trade-off is that once activated, characters become much slower, and when activation wears off, they become highly fatigued and must recover. So it must be used wisely. The last feature is Dragon Rush. After knockback during hyper mode, the character can activate a minigame of chance, a three-part minigame that displays four face pad buttons to choose from, with each round lowering the button. The attacker chooses the button, and at the same time the defender must also choose buttons to try and guess the right action. If the defender can guess right, the minigame is cancelled. But if they guess wrong, the, the attacker is allowed a powerful attack causing significant damage. Budokai 3 did amass huge success for its gameplay. And in an interesting turn, it would not be for another two years until we see another Budokai title. Another Dragon Ball Z game was taking the world by storm in 2005 by Spike. Dimps the following year started putting out exclusive Dragon Ball titles for the PlayStation Portable, Sony's handheld system. Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai, sounds a bit familiar to another title I've covered, features 18 characters to play as. The game, like its previous brethren, retaining all the same gameplay mechanics, but some removed according to hardware and button limitations, such as Dragon Rush. The story mode actually offers something a bit different this time around. Previous entries have had the player going through the basic timeline of Dragon Ball Z, Shin Budokai actually allows the story to be, take place after the events of the Fusion Reborn movie, and like Super Booted in 2, allows for alternate endings based on characters picked. 
Network battles were added to the game, allowing players to fight with their friends and other people online. The following year, the PSP sequel Shin Budokai Another Road is released. Again, very similar to Shin Budokai 1 in regards to gameplay and includes up to 24 characters, the story mode is uniquely its own. Deviating from the repetitive timeline progression, this story takes place during the Future Trunks timeline, in which the androids are defeated, but the events of the Majin Buu saga take place within the Future Trunks timeline. Babidi is planning to resurrect Majin Buu, and Trunks must destroy him before that happens. In 2008, we were also brought another big game that was developed for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 platforms. Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit is another game in which Dimps had learned from their previous titles and made slight tweaks and enhancements to what's already available. It still rules under the Budokai series as they all contain very similar elements. The health is adjusted to 6 blocks when characters reach a certain percentage of health they activate what's known as a drama scene, which usually grants a transformation or a second wind type ability. Such as a character jumping in the way to help a player avoid damage, characters can be used as supports which also activate the drama scene. The exhaustion has been adjusted to also be depleted upon guarding certain attacks as well as excessive key use, again causing characters to be forced to recover key while susceptible to attack. The roster has 21 characters to choose from and the game reverts back to the story mode characters of the Saiyan to the Cell Saga. All transformations included that pertain to those specific sagas are there as well. The story mode titled Z Chronicles is the same premise as previous Budokai titles but this time they seem to cut out the fluff and get straight to the meat a bit faster. And a few what if scenarios make a return as well. Online mode is added to the game, allowing players to duke it out with their favorite Dragon Ball characters competitively over the internet. And the last game to talk about, released months after Burst Limit, is Dragon Ball Infinite World, which came out in November of 2008, and is considered to be the last Dragon Ball title on PlayStation 2. Infinite World returns to the Budokai formula of capsules, but retains elements and mechanics from Budokai 2, 3, and Shin Budokai. Key Blast, Exhaustion, returning minigames like Dragon Rush are back. The story mode is the same as previous Budokai titles. Most elements and story are just returning minigames featured in Budokai, except with some differences such as Goku running down Snake Way within a certain time limit, or Tien having his hands be guided on sale to use his Neo Tribeam. It won't be until another six years until we get a proper title from Dimps. But that's going to be all for this video here. In the next video, I'll go over... I, wait, 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 wait. Personally, I wanted to skip over this title, but I feel I have to be fair about it. So Dragon Ball Evolution, PSP title, released in 2009. This game, based on the live action movie. While the gameplay is again similar to Budokai, the roster is only at 11. But it features characters like Bulma as a playable fighter. The game is modeled to look like that of the movie. It actually incorporates a lot more from the anime than the movie did, and really offers nothing else outside of just versus training and possible survival mode. And I really want to move on from this one, because this game has really nothing else to offer. So to conclude this video, in the next one, I will be going over the Spike Arrow Dragon Ball titles, which may be my personal favorite titles. These style of games have influenced the future MMO Dragon Ball games as well. I was Nick with Gaming Instincts and I'll be leaving you here so don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and hit the notification bell to stay up to date when a new video is ready for your viewing pleasure. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.gaminginstincts.com for the latest news, featured articles, reviews and more. See you then!